Okay. 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 All right. Hi, teacher. Coming, okay. coming. Hi, teacher. Come back. Come back. <laughs> Muy brillante. <laughs> okay, so yeah, what there was, happened, teacher? There was an out, outage. Out. There was an outage here in my zone. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to finish the classes <laughs> because neither my computer nor my phone are charged, so I don't have a lot of uh, time. I think my computer is only gonna give me like <laughs> half an hour, and the phone has like two hours maybe. But yeah, we'll see. So. We're back. Sí, lo importante es que estamos de regreso. A ver qué dicen, porque sí hubo, hubo cortes en varios, reportan. Ah, ahí está, ya regresó. Bueno, este, varios compañeros estaban reportando cortes, así que ya veremos qué pasa. Esperemos que no sea nada tan problemático. Bueno, a ver, les estaba diciendo. Um, I was saying, uh, which American president, sí, which American president appears on the one dollar bill? Do you guys know the answer to that? Ya fueron a copiar, ya lo fueron a buscar en lo que me fui, ¿verdad? Excuse me, excuse me, everybody. Uh, I believe that next week are we going to have class all, all the week. I suppose, yes. Yeah, I suppose, yes. I suppose, yes. Okay, yeah. okay I suppose. All right. I, I, am, a, I am assuming right. I am assuming that you guys hear me all yeah. cut it and all like um, yeah. weebly, but I'm going to right be back. Now, okay. There's no yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Pero en un momento, ya regreso. Ya va a regresar el internet de mi casa, oh, así okay. que ya casi me conecto ya de forma normal. Okay. El problema es que estoy con el teléfono y no tengo tan buena señal. Pero bueno. Okay. Don't worry. Be happy. Yeah, that, that happens. Okay. You know. That happens, things that happen. Hasta ahora solo una vez me había pasado eh, con ustedes, solo una vez, recuerdo al principio del curso, pero bueno, yeah. me preocupé, creí que íbamos a tener clase todos los días de la próxima semana también y yo dije, no, los voy a dejar libres para el próximo viernes de pupusas, por Dios. <risa> pero bueno, ya veremos. We'll see, guys. Um, espérenme, que no quiere cargar. Bueno, igual, en lo que llega... La respuesta a la pregunta, which American president appears on the one dollar bill? ¿Quién conoce cuál es el presidente de Estados Unidos que está en el billete de uno? Uh, George Washington. George Washington. Yes, that's the one. It's George. Yes, old man George Washington. Um, all right. I'm making the switch now. <laughs> Lost the connection, eh? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, en lo, que, en lo que se cambió, en lo que hizo el switch del Wi-Fi del teléfono a la, a la, al de la casa fue que se, se trabó tantito. Ok. Sí, pero ya estamos. Ok, espero que no se corte de nuevo, así que ya veremos qué pasa. Here we go. All right. So, that's, that's the one, George Washington. Now, the next question. What geometric shape is generally used for stop signs? You know, it's very common stop signs, like we see them Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Hmm. I don't know how to say that. Triangle. Very, circles. Very close. Sometimes in some cities, circles are used, but no. The most common one is an octagon. Next time you octagon. see one, yes. Yes. Next, next time you see one, pay attention. See, it tiene ocho yeah. lados. So that will be an octagon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Hexagon is only like, it's like six <laughs> sides. So yeah, it's different. Yeah. Okay. Um, now the next question. How many colors are there in a rainbow? That's a very simple one. Seven. seven. Violet, red. Yes, there is only seven. Seven Pink. colors. I don't know them all, but I know it's seven. Okay. I have known that for a wow. very long time. Um, colors. Yes. Uh, okay. Let me look it up. What colors are there in the rainbow? What are the colors? And what does it mean, the rainbow? Uh, rainbow is el arco iris arco iris no 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 yes, i mean yes, yes. what does it mean a rainbow in the sky what does it mean oh well that yeah. is a nice question as well that is a it's, nice question it's, it's like a reflection of the lights uh, of the sunlight the light in a, uh, a, a couple of waters makes a contact with the water yeah wow. of course well but that is uh, when we speak about scientific, you know, but when we scientific speak about way. That, is the fact that God has yeah. done. Oh, I, 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 religion, signification, uh, meaning. 
the, the religion meaning. Uh -huh. The religious meaning of the rainbow. I, I used to know that, but I don't know it anymore. But I think it's like an, an, an allegiance that happens yeah. or like, like the show of hope or something like that. Yeah, yeah, but the colors of the rainbow are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Those are in English, yeah. okay? It yeah. has it has green too. No. Yes. Well, light yeah. blue. Light light blue. Celeste. Okay. Yeah. That will be the indigo. The indigo that is mentioned here. That's the indigo. Yes, that is the indigo. Mm -hmm. Indigo is a is a um is is similar. No, I understand. I don't know. Vamos a seguir con la siguiente mejor. Ahí después lo averiguamos. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. This one. This one is very common because of a basketball team. Okay. Ahí les doy una clave. Because of a basketball team. So if you, if you guys like basketball, if you have ever watched a basketball game, maybe you will have an idea. What is the nickname of the U.S. state of California? What is the nickname of the U.S. state of California? <clears throat> Lakers. Lakers? I know. No. LA, LA. Uh -huh. the, 14th, the 14th department of El Salvador. Uh, Michael Jordan. The same I mean, as, yes, the same as, as one old bridge from El Salvador. It's the Golden State. Oh, Golden yes, State. Golden State. <laughs> California is also known as the Golden State. The same as, for example, Georgia yeah. is known as the Peaches. Yeah, or people from Georgia are known as peaches because they cultivate a lot of, a lot of peaches. In this case, it is the Golden State because they say that there was a ton of gold mines in California. Back in the day when it was still part of Mexico, there used to be a lot of gold mines in California. Okay, now, now a question about um, a color. See, is it true or false? The color orange is named after the fruit. True or false? The color orange is named after the fruit. What do you guys think? I think it's true. Is it the name of the or of the of the fruit that gave the name to the color, or is it the color that gave the name to the fruit? I think the first is the fruit, and the name of, uh, of the color is for the fruit. Okay, fruit. and that is correct. Yes, that's true. The color orange is named after the fruit. Así que las naranjas le dieron el nombre al color naranja. En inglés, claro, ¿verdad? Yeah. Eh, nosotros porque decimos anaranjado, tal vez se nos haga como, ¿qué? Pero el color rosa originalmente yes. debería ser, ¿verdad? Naranja. Naranja. Yes. Ok. Ahora, aquí viene una palabra diferente. Si no entienden esta palabra, por favor, me dejan saber. Um, who is depicted on the US $100 bill? Who is depicted on the US dollar bill? Hundred dollar bill. Sorry, on the U.S. hundred dollar bill. Any of you guys knows the answer to that question? What is the meaning, sir? Depicted. Okay, I'm going to send the word depicted. And uy, sorry. <laughs> Perdón. En lugar de entrar al chat, le di a apagar la cámara. Pero aquí sigo, aquí sigo. Okay. Uh, depicted. Depicted is basically it means um is a, a synonym to shown shown depicted and shown are similar in meaning depicted and shown sí anteriormente tuvimos una una pregunta similar a esta era con eh, la respuesta yeah. correcta de um, washington. washington yes george yeah. washington so now depicted see sí. who is depicted <laughs> on the us 100 dollar bill can you please thomas jefferson right thomas jefferson that is from the two dollar bill the rare two dollar bill yes. benjamin benjamin now in my case you know why i know the answer to the question because um and it, yes is no it's benjamin franklin it's benjamin franklin, benjamin franklin. i know that is franklin because in many i got movies... one of two dollars <laughs> yes there you have it yeah, that's Thomas Jefferson. En ese caso, sí, ¿verdad? En el de dos dólares, uh -huh. sí es Thomas Jefferson. Pero yo uh -huh. le estaba preguntando el $100. $100. Sí. Oh, $100 no, I don't know those. En el de 100. Ah, yo, ah, ah, tiene uno de mi papá en la juguetera. Lo voy a traer. No, I just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, yes, I know that is Benjamin Franklin because in many videos, like rap videos or in many like series where there is like um, people of colors. No, they say Franklin's. 
I have Franklin. Franklins oh, on me. Franklin. Yes, they say Franklins. True. Ahora, los Benjamins era de reggaetón. En reggaetón dicen los Benjamins. No sé si ustedes alguna vez antes, yo sé que a Walter antes le gustaba el reggaetón, no se haga. Yeah. Entonces, cuando usted escuchaba a los Benjamins, ¿sí? cuando escuchaba a los Benjamins era por eso. O sea, ellos decían los Benjamins, era por lo de los billetes de 100. Ellos decían que tenían un montón. Mm -hmm. Pero en inglés, like, los raperos dicen Franklins. I have Franklins on my pocket. O sea, que significa que tienen billetes de 100, ¿verdad? En sus bolsillos. Oh, All right. Now, this one is another one that, at least for me, it is easy because I have a friend who visited the, 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 the country. But I don't know. Maybe you guys have the answer. What is the name of Poland in Polish? What is the name of Poland in Polish? El nombre de Polonia en polaco. Hmm, I don't know, really. <laughs> I don't know, polaco. Ok. En mi caso, como les digo, mi amiga hasta me trajo recuerdos de Polonia, así que por eso está en, en todos los recuerdos está. Es Polska. 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 Yes. Polska. Polska. If you ever hear somebody mentioning Polska, that means that maybe they have been to Poland and they see it. Like, así oh, como aquí, ¿verdad? Polska. Hay muchas personas que tienen, que compran la bandera Dios, Unión, Libertad, y eso es común en muchas cosas, en muchos recuerdos, muchos souvenirs. En Polonia <coughs> casi todo traía el Polska. Ahora, esta próxima. I think this one you guys already know it. This one is very common. I think this one is long, known almost by everyone. If you understand the question, you will know the answer. Which restaurant's mascot is a clown? Which restaurant's mascot is a clown? McDonald's. 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 <laughs> And also my sister's restaurant. <laughs> no, just kidding. So yeah, uh, that's, that's the one. McDonald's, ¿sí? McDonald's es el que es un payaso. Ahora, en Estados Unidos o en inglés decimos mascot. En, o sea, se puede confundir, ¿verdad? La palabra mascot con eh, una mascota. O sea, puede ser una, una, una false cognate. Yeah. Pero mascot en sí se refiere a todo aquello, una figura que sea representativa yeah. de algo, ¿sí? So that's a mascot. All right. Uh, now, let's hear the second, I mean, the next one. Esa ya tenemos la respuesta, sí, ya lo mencionó anteriormente, es verdad. Sandra hasta nos, nos, nos puso así en la cara que tenía un billete de dos, pero solo para que, para que salgamos de eso. Uh, the likeness of which president, ahora, esa es otra, miren. Eh, Daniel, no sé si me permite, le voy a silenciar porque se escucha ruido de fondo. No sabes que hay Ok. Sorry. Bueno, este, um, a ver, uh, esta es otra forma de decirlo. Antes, antes ya dijimos, ¿verdad? Uh, cuando hablábamos acerca del billete de 100, who is depicted? Esa es una forma. Ahora, cuando hablamos de likeness of which, likeness, ¿sí? Es básicamente hablar acerca como de la apariencia o similitud, ¿sí? O sea, como a quién se parece. The likeness of which president is featured on the rare $2 bill of U.S. currency. Now, we already know. It is Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, Sandra has already mentioned it. Ella ya lo mostró, ¿verdad? Ya voy a traer mi ADC, no se preocupen. Okay. <laughs> Now, uh, we are only going to do four more, four more questions. Cuatro más, porque sí, para, para aprovechar un poco más el tiempo después, ¿verdad? Nice. Yeah. Now, uh, this one is one that surprised me when I looked it up. What is xenophobia, the fear of? Where is xenophobia or xenophobia? The fear no. of. Sinophobia. People who suffer of xenophobia. What fear do they have? What do they fear? Remember. I don't remember what kind of fear that, that means. Okay. It is people who are scared of dogs. Oh. Dogs. Xenophobia. Yes. Dogs. dogs. Sinophobia. Sinophobia. Yeah, sinophobia. Yeah, That is the people who are scared of dogs. Okay. Now. Can you write it down? Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, I'm going to send it right now. Uh, here we have it. It is sinophobia. 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 All right. So the next one is Thank one you. that I think a lot of people have seen. I think a lot of people have uh, Also, um, have you know, in our country, it is very commonly seen. Is the UN, I mean, the, the, the EU flag, see, the European Union flag. The flag of the European Union has how many stars on it? Well, 
Ok, Sandra, sí, ella trabaja con, o sea, sí, ¿verdad? Así como no, así como no. Yes, 12. The flag of the European Union has 12 stars on it. Yeah. It has 12 stars on it. Ok. Uh, Hi, Sandra. Ok. Hi. Why 12? What? Why 12 stars in the flag? Have a reason for it? For example, in the United States? Well, because, uh, porque, because the, there is not enough space for the 27 nations conforming the European Union. Okay, so they decided to go only with 12. Uh huh. Makes sense. Kind of, sort of. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, next one is a true or false. True or false. There are 87,400 seconds in a day. Once Ooh. again, true or false. There are 86, sorry, it was not 87, 86,400 seconds in a day. I think it's false. It's, it's a short number for okay. seconds in a day. Okay, 86,400 segundos en un día. Do you think it is true or false? Jacqueline diciendo allá. Ah, Jacqueline ya parece como I que es de esos muñequitos que ponen en el carro. Sí, no, sí, no, así lo está poniendo. Es true. Jacqueline dice, sí, no, sí, yo no sé. Es true. Ya, it's true. It is true. It is true. It is true, true. yes. 86,400 seconds in a day. Ya hizo la cuenta, Juan. Nice. Y Walter dijo, lo Benjamin. <laughs> ok. Very nice, very nice. Now, true or false. This one, it might knock you guys down. True or false. A neck plant is a vegetable. Yes, it is. Are you sure? Yes. It's better than henna. Yes, but there is a problem with it. A ver, en inglés el problema es que son bastante técnicos con algunas cosas, ¿sí? Uh -huh. Y por la forma en la cual la berenjena crece, si ustedes buscan berenjena, o I mean eggplant in English, it is considered a fruit. Fruit. Same as an avocado. No. Yes. So eggplants and avocados in English are considered fruits. So an eggplant, as we know it as a vegetable in Spanish, in English is going to be considered a fruit. Therefore, the answer to the question is false. Okay, now the last one. This one is one that I didn't know myself, so I'm not gonna lie. This one is new information for me. Uh, but I hope one of you guys at least knows the answer to this. I think we're gonna have people here who knows the answer to this question. Now, what is the last letter of the Greek alphabet? What is the last letter of the Greek alphabet? What is the Greek alphabet? Sorry. The Greek griego. alphabet. El, el, el alfabeto el griego. griego. Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Alfabeta. Any idea? Gamma. No. Gamma, that is in the middle. Beta. The that middle. is also okay. in the middle. Alpha is the first one. Omega. 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 Yes. Omega. That's yeah. the last oh, letter. Omega. Alpha and the por eso es alfa y omega. It's omega. I remember, I remember. caballero del zodiaco. Okay. Okay. Oh, Benjamin. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But yeah. Um, Does it mean that the alligator pier is a fruit for them too? Sorry? Uh, does it mean that the alligator pier is a fruit instead of a vegetable? Uh, alligator pier. I'm not sure. Let me look it up. Alligator pier. Alligator pier is a um, falta or aguacate. Oh, yeah. That's another. <laughs> that's another term. Yeah, that's another term for avocado. Ah, yeah. Nice. So yeah, that's considered a fruit. If it's the same thing as an avocado, it's considered a fruit. Okay. Now. Esta pregunta, esa no es, que, no es que la tengo aquí, sino que es una de trivia que me sé desde hace un montón de tiempo y que es una de las preguntas o de las cosas por las cuales me siento más orgulloso en la vida, ¿ok? okay. Este, do you guys, do any of you guys know why, um, <laughs> why do um, the Facebook logo is blue? Do you, any of you guys know why 
does the Facebook logo is blue? I don't know. No idea? I don't think no? no idea. Okay, so the reason why, supposedly, I'm not sure, but there are many interviews that show that it is supposed to be true, is that Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook's creator, the, like the founder of Facebook, is colorblind. When you're colorblind, basically what it means is that there are some colors that you see better than others. And he's colorblind for red and green. Therefore, the only main color that he can see better is blue. So he decided to use uh, blue for the logo of his company because he was going to be able to see it better. If he was any other color, it might be hard for him to identify the logo or to identify the color. Therefore, he decided to go with blue. So, yeah, those are the questions. Those were the questions for this evening. Así que hoy no íbamos a hablar acerca de nosotros, sino que trivia, ¿verdad? Pero bueno. Uh, you can repeat the, the condition of Max, Mark Zuckerberg? Uh, colorblind. He's colorblind. colorblind. Yes. Colorblind. Okay. Colorblind. Which means that he can see some colors better than others, or he basically sees... Um, colorblind is blue. like a daltonic Basically, yeah. yes, that's yeah. almost like a daltonic. Now, when you're daltonic, like declare a daltonic, you cannot yeah. see no colors. But when you're colorblind, yeah. there are some sections of your eyes, or at least uh -huh. the, the processing in the brain, that is more limited than others. And in oh, his case, okay. red and, and, and green are not very well processed. Therefore, he cannot like ad identify colors that are on that spectrum. But when he sees blue, when he sees blue, he sees way better. So, yes, that is the answer. All right, people. Um, so, here I had the questions. Aquí las tenía, miren, para que vean. Siguen las respuestas. Me las memorice antes de entrar. A ver, um, this was the conversation we had from yesterday. If you guys remember, este tipo desesperado who needs a date. We're going to come back to this in a bit. ¿sí? Vamos a regresar a esto en un ratito. Pero antes, I want to cover this topic, which is making <gasps> Now, we have different ways of making suggestions, as you guys can see. We have, for example, with gerunds, yeah? Once again, remember, when we make suggestions, it's not only that we are telling other people what to do, but maybe it is only uh, offering our opinion or offering our perspective on a specific topic. Um, let's say that we are deciding whether or not we should go eat at Pollo Campero, let's say. Um, and I want to offer my perspective. I want to say the reason why I think it's a good idea or why I am against that option. Uh, now, the next one is with infinitives. Very similar. Like they all basically work in the same way. The only difference is going to be how we're going to use um, the grammatical structure. Then we have with model plus, plus verb. You already know that uh, modal verbs are very common in English, and some of the most common ones are can, may, might, could, and uh, um, which one was the other one? I forgot. Well, should. can, can, or oh, should. Yes, that's the one. Thank you very much. Should. That, those are the main modal verbs that we use in English. So you can use them plus the main verb, and that is going to work as a suggestion and the next one is with negative questions like why don't that is the main way you are going to establish a negative question to provide a suggestion why don't see esta es la más utilizada cuando se trata de la psicología inversa verdad o sea cuando ustedes están tratando de um, hacer que alguien haga algo pero que, o sea lo que en sí están haciendo es como dejar la, la respuesta o dejar la opción, entre comillas, a la persona que recibe el comentario. Pero en realidad, o sea, ustedes ya están ofreciendo cuál es su perspectiva. A ver, so with gerunds, how is it going to work with gerunds? Well, when you use gerunds to provide suggestions will be something like, what about looking through the personal ads? What about looking? What about looking? And then, of course, you use whichever compliment you need. Um, let's say that you see a friend of yours who is struggling um, to get money. You know, he has a lot of problems to get money and it is very hard for him lately because he cannot get paid better at his job. So you can make a suggestion. What about trying to work as an Uber on your uh, days off? 
you know, what about trying to work as an Uber on your days off? So you're only providing a suggestion. It is not that the person is going to be obligated in any way, shape, or form to do that, but that is just your your, your perspective. Probably you come from a, from a previous experience, you have been an Uber yourself, and you know that it pays, you know? So you are only providing one option for your mm -hmm. friend. Now, the other option you can use is, have you thought about and then you provide uh, whichever option you consider to be um, applicable to the situation. If we're talking about the same situation, it is a friend of yours who is um, struggling with money, you can tell them, have you thought about um, getting a job, like an online job? Or like for me, you know, like a nighttime job? That's what, uh, ahorita me acuerdo de acordar de eso y acabo de, de mencionar eso porque justo me escribió, o sea, yo escribí en el grupo de, de facilitadores que no tenía energía, ¿verdad? Y justo por eso me escribió la, una amiga mía que fue quien me ayudó a, a, a conseguir el trabajo acá. Ah, pues dice que justo ahora tiene un estudiante en su clase que se parece un montón a mí. O sea, que, o sea, platica, <risa> platica igual que mí, habla igual que mí y se parece un montón. Y dice que ella pensaba que era yo solo disfrazado, que me habían puesto a evaluarla a ella en, en la clase. But oh, bueno, that's just another thing. Now, have you thought about joining? Have you thought about getting an overtime job? You know, that's a suggestion. I'm only providing my perspective, my idea to you. Um, the same, if it's a plan that we're trying to put together as, as, as friends, uh, we can use this one. What about getting a pizza for dinner? That's only a suggestion. I'm not saying that that's going to have to be done, but I'm only offering what I consider to be the best option, at least for me or personally. Now, this is with gerunds, as I said before. Now, with infinitives. With infinitives, it is going to work more in the form of a sentence, not as a question. With gerunds, the most regular way of using them is going to be as a question. Like you trying to ask the people if they could do this, you know, and when you use could, of course, at the beginning of a sentence, that turns into a question. That is why uh, with gerunds is going to be more in the form of a question. With infinitives, you can uh, use phrases like the following. It might be a good idea, and here we have the infinitive, to. You, it might be a good idea, to, and of course, then you can continue on with your suggestion. For this case, as we're talking about this guy who's desperate to have a date, uh, the suggestion is to check out those discussion groups at bookstores or at the bookstore. It might be a good idea to check out those discussion groups at the bookstore. What about a suggestion for someone who is struggling with his relationship? You have a friend who is having a lot of problems his, with his or her spouse, and uh, they're just trying to get the flame back alive. Well, you can tell this, per this person, it might be a good idea to go on a date, you know, to leave your kids at home and go on a date, only the two of you. That might be a good idea. Uh, or another way you can provide a suggestion is, one thing you could do is, now, in this case, it depends on the situation. If you want to make it like a strong statement, if you want to, to, to tell this person, this is my strong suggestion, something that I will do if I were you, like as a, as a very strong suggestion, you can use it like this. Si, o sea, si ustedes van a hacerlo, ¿verdad? Como una sugerencia así, como muy fuerte, como algo, o sea, que ustedes consideran que es la mejor idea del mundo, pueden utilizar el, la forma infinitiva, ¿sí? El to acá. Si no, si solamente, o sea, estamos ofreciendo una, una opinión así, un tanto leve, o sea, que no es tan, tan probado, que nosotros tal vez no hemos pasado por ese tipo de experiencia, ustedes solo pueden decirlo con el is. One thing you can do is, y luego, ¿verdad?, utilizamos ya eh, el verbo en su forma base. Ahora, esta frase, one thing you could do is, también puede aplicarse con gerunds, ¿sí? También se puede aplicar con gerunds. One mm -hmm. thing you could do is, going to a movie, you know, like if somebody calls you and tells you, hey, bro, I'm, I'm bored. Like, are you up to anything? Y ustedes están en la playa con su familia, ¿verdad? Entonces dicen, uh, yeah, I'm at work right now. O sea, ya dándole mentira, ¿verdad? Con el trabajo. But uh, then you can tell this person, one thing you could do is go to a movie, you know, like 
you're not doing much, so maybe you can go to the movies. Um, or if you think that this is a, a good option, you can tell them. One thing you could do is um, to go to the park. You know, there is always some good activities at the park. You are sure that this person is going to get, um, you know, happier or at least less bored if they go to the park. So you use to go to the park, to go to the park. Um, another occasion, let's say that somebody is struggling with their car, having problems. It has been broken for the last couple of months. Um, you can offer you know, uh, somebody who can fix it. One thing you could do is to sell it. Sí, o sea, podría ser también esa, esa una, una forma de solucionar el problema. One thing you could do is to sell it. Another one is, one thing you could do is to visit a good mechanic. Or if you have a specific mechanic, you can also mention that mechanic. So those are the ways in which you're going to use suggestions with infinitives um, and suggestions with gerunds. Now, with modal verbs, Model and verbs or models and main verbs we have here. Maybe you, and then here we have the model. This is the model we're using in this specific occasion. Maybe you could go, could go. There is no need. Remember, after modal verbs, we never use um, the particle to. Sí, nunca vamos a utilizar el to, a pesar que ustedes sepan, ¿verdad?, en sus mentes, que eso que van a utilizar ahí, sea should, sea might, sea may, sea can, sea could, es un verbo. No necesitamos colocar esa partícula en el medio para poder separar ese verbo modal del verbo principal de la oración. Esos dos funcionan muy bien juntos. O oh, el otro que estaba pensando era must, que ese es el que más comúnmente las personas... Eh, Tienen a, tienen a utilizarlo de forma incorrecta. Y cuando digo las personas, hablo de mis compañeros en la universidad, todo el tiempo decían esto mal, ¿sí? O sea, todo el tiempo decían, must, must to go, por decir algo. O sea, en lugar de decir, I must go, o sea, que es que me tengo que ir, I ah. must go, ¿sí? Decían, must to, y no. Must se utiliza solito, porque es un verbo modal. Y los verbos modales no necesitan utilizar, ¿verdad? La partícula tú en el medio que genera un infinitivo porque ellos eh, son verbos aparte, ¿sí? Son verbos que se utilizan específicamente en situaciones, ¿verdad? Mayormente de ya sea obligación, habilidad o también para hablar acerca de posibilidad, ¿sí? Obligación, habilidad o posibilidad. Eh, entonces, must es el de obligación. O sea, ese es el verbo más, el verbo modal más alto que existe. Sí. Por ejemplo, eh, si utilizo should, should es un verbo de posibilidad u obligación. Está como en el medio, ¿verdad? Eso significa, pues, deberías, sí, debería irme. Yo puedo decir, I should go, I think I should go, creo que debería irme. O sea, pero eso es simplemente una idea que tengo en este momento, sí, o sea, ya se está haciendo tarde, creo que debería irme. Pero si ya está bastante tarde o si ya recibí el mensaje, ¿verdad?, de alguien que me dijo, hey, Te quiero en la casa en cinco minutos. Si yo estoy a 20 minutos de la casa, ahí utilizo must. Hey, people, I must go. ¿Sí? No decimos I must to go, sino I must go. Así que el mismo caso para todos los demás verbos modales. Si yo voy a decir... Could... Sure. Sí, dígame. Y el ahora, 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 so, yes, este sí. Ahora to, in this case. Yes, ahora go. Out to go. Ahora, ahora. Oh, yeah. el detalle es que este normalmente solo se utiliza, se utiliza diciendo ahora, o sea, es así se ahora, pronuncia, ahora. ¿verdad? Ahora. Ajá. Eh, ahora ajá. Y por eso para muchos es una sola, una sola palabra, pero en realidad ajá. es out to, ¿sí? Out, out to. Ajá. Ahora, y okay. el detalle importante también, ah, gracias, Sandra, perdón, gracias, gracias. El detalle importante es que esta, ¿sí? Es la estructura del mismo, ¿sí? Es decir, Ajá. out to. Exacto. ¿sí? Ahora, entonces, esa es la, la estructura que él tiene. O Exacto. sea que, eh, por ejemplo, este tú es, como dicen en, en, en derecho, mi hermana me enseñaba esa palabra, si es mentira, pues yo no sé, inalienable de, eh, de esta primera palabra. O sea, el tú. Yeah. O sea, que no se puede separar, ¿verdad? Entonces deben estar juntas para que tenga sentido. Exacto. Así mm -hmm. que, okay. eh, sí, siempre vamos a tener que utilizar... Es suggestion, ¿ya? Yes, ahora es a suggestion. Uh -huh. Yes, you yeah. ought to go... What does it mean? 
TV, es similar al Shul. Es similar yeah. al Shul, yeah. aunque en este caso es más como un, un consejo. Ahora casi siempre se usa, digamos, o sea, si ustedes me, me dicen un consejo a mí, o sea, porque pues son, son mayores, ¿verdad? Ma, varios de ustedes son mayores que mí, entonces yo respetaría ese, ese consejo. Así que es como un consejo que yo puedo recibir de alguien mayor. En cambio, el should es más como entre amigos. Se puede utilizar mucho de uh -huh. forma más coloquial. En cambio, el ahora es como alguien que tal vez ya experimentó alguna situación y está aconsejándome desde un punto de, de vista eh, experimentado. O sea, ya teniendo uh -huh. como base, ¿verdad? Cierto conocimiento en el tema. Así que así más o menos se utiliza el ahora. Pero el significado Exacto. en sí es similar al should. O sea, es básicamente decir deberías. Si ¿sí? deberías hacer esto, deberías hacer lo otro. También se usa el ahora, lo puedo utilizar, o sea, para decir cosas que eh, yo debería hacer. Sí. O sea, como si yo me doy cuenta de algo que estoy haciendo mal, yo puedo decir, uh, I think I ahora, y o sea, menciono, ¿verdad? Lo que yo podría mejorar. I ahora study more. Sí. Debería estudiar uh -huh. más. Entonces, porque yo ya me di cuenta de que perdón, eso me está fallando, debería hacer eso y me estoy dando como ese consejo. Y, o sea, ahora, si lo vamos a, a colocar como a mí me gusta hacer casi siempre con los, um, con los adjetivos o los adverbios, se encuentra como entre el medio del should y el must, ¿sí? Porque oh. es casi como una, una obligación un poco mayor que el should. O sea, el, el grado de obligación que, que, que este conlleva es un poquito mayor que el should, pero claro, no llega como a ser como must. O sea, porque must es una obligación directa. Casi como si alguien con autoridad sobre mí me dice que no, tengo que hacer algo. ¿verdad? Exactamente. O sea, si es mi papá, uh -huh. si es mi jefe que me uh -huh. dice must, pues yo tengo que acatar esa orden. En cambio, ahora es, o sea, deberías dejar, por ejemplo, de venir tarde, you Ahora stop coming late to work. Eh, pero igual, no es tan común. Eso sí, en casos como ese yeah. no es tan común. O sea, como les digo, se escucha mucho más dando consejos de una persona con experiencia a alguien, ¿verdad? Que tal vez está aprendiendo, empezando a hacer algo. Ok. Um, so the next one. With negative questions, ya anteriormente les comentaba, o sea, la, 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 el juego con esto de los negative questions es casi como al utilizar la, la psicología inversa. O sea, nosotros damos nuestro punto de vista en la pregunta, pero colocamos ese why don't you al principio como para hacer mm -hmm. que la persona sienta que tiene la decisión, ¿verdad? En su mano, pero nosotros estamos facilitando cuál es la opción que consideramos. Ahora... Uh, why don't you join a dating service? Sí, o sea, este es casi como el consejo tipo, o sea, si tú tienes la idea, es, te vas a sentir bien, ¿verdad? Si tú dices, yeah, I think I should join a dating service, o sea, y vas a sentir como que la idea se te ocurrió a ti, aunque en realidad ya te la estaban sirviendo, ¿verdad? Ahí en bandeja de plata. Entonces, esa sería la forma más común de ofrecer un consejo, pero un consejo ya podríamos decir un poquito cargado, ¿verdad? De intención de parte nuestra como interlocutores. Así que bueno, estas son algunas de las formas en las cuales vamos a ofrecer sugerencias. No sé si tenemos alguna duda acerca de este tema. Any questions you guys may have about um, making suggestions at the moment? Seems like no. All right, so if we don't have any questions, we're gonna go to the conversation. Here's the conversation for this evening. Yesterday, I did a quick reading about it. I'm going to do it once again so that we have a clarification of any words that may come as tricky when it comes to pronunciation or any variations that we may find, you know, with, with the pace or um, pronunciation as a whole. So we have two people, James and Mike. And the conversation is supposed to work as following. This is so depressing. I haven't had a date since Angela broke up with me. What can I do? Um, what about looking through the personal ads on the internet? That's how I met Amy. Actually, I've tried that. But the people you meet are always different from what you expect. Well, why don't you join an online dating service? A friend of mine made his wife that way. That's not a bad idea. Also, it might be a good idea 
to check out those discussion groups at the bookstore. Yeah, if I don't meet someone, at least I might find a good book. Okay, so that's the conversation. Any questions you guys may have about any of the pronunciation or any of the words you find in this conversation? I think it's relatively easy. I don't see many uh, spots where it can become hard. The only thing is that most of the lines are a little bit long, but you know that's not a problem for you guys. It's not something you're gonna struggle with. Um, so yeah, if we are ready, I think I'm going to be making the uh, breakout rooms available in just a minute. Now, um, please, if you haven't gotten your uh, screenshot, do it now before we go so you can share it with your team. So breakout rooms are going to be open just about now. Colgate. <laughs> I Mike. One, two, three, four, five. We are five. Okay. We are six. Okay. Well, five. James no, and only Mike. five because the sixth one is me. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Amil Car and Javier, you are the the, the ninth. The first one. And oh, yes, you are the only the two men here. You you begin. Uh, can I try it? Yes, yes. You and and Amil Car and then uh, Patricia and me and and then Jacqueline and Patricia. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I will be James. All right. Okay. Uh, this is so depressing. I haven't had a date since Angela broke up with me. What can I do? Be okay. Okay. Uh, what about looking through the personal ads on the internet? That's how I met Amy. Actually. I've tried that, but the people you met are always different from what you expect. Well, why don't you join an online dating service? A friend of mine uh, met his wife that way. That's not a bad idea. Also, it might be a good idea to check out those discussion groups uh, at the bookstore. Yeah, if I don't meet someone, at least I might find a good book. Very good. Okay, okay. now Patricia and me, Where I will be James, okay? This is so depressing. Okay. I haven't had a date since Angela broke up with me. What can I do? What about looking through the personal ads on the internet? That's how I meet Amy. Actually, I would try that, but the people you meet are always different from what you expect. Well, why don't you join an online dating service? A friend of mine met five that way. That's not bad, I have an idea. Also, it might be a good idea to check out those discussion groups at the bookstore. Yeah, if I don't meet someone, at least I might find a good book. 
Okay, Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> this is so depressing. I haven't had a day since Angela broke up with me. What can I do? What about looking through the personal ads on the internet? That's how I met Amy. Actually, you tried that, but the people you meet are always different from what you expect. Well, why don't you join an online dating safe service? A friend of mine met his wife back. Looking through the personal ads on the internet. <laughs> That's how I met Amy. Actually, I tried that, but the people you meet are always different from what you expect. Well, why don't you join an online dating service? A friend of mine met his wife that is way. That's an that's not a bad idea. Also, also it might be a good idea to check out. Those discussion graphs at the box store. Yeah, if I don't meet someone, at least I, I might find a, find a good book. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Rosa Maria, it's your turn. Yes. I'm James. This is, this is a pricing. I haven't had a day since. Angela broke up with me. What can I do? What about looking through the person and one and on the internet that now I meet any? Actually, I tried that, but the people you meet are always different from what you expect. Well, why don't you join an online dating service and friend of mine meet his wife that away? That's not a bad idea. Also, it might be a good idea to check out the discussion group in the books bookstore. Hmm. So nice, nice job. I was looking at most of you guys. You were doing a great, great um, practice. I think that, yeah, you are doing amazing people. Now, before we go, before we finish this week, I just wanted to, well, thank you once again. Sometimes I, I kind of like skip doing that. Thanking you guys for taking the time, you know, for learning, because it is something very incredible, very nice. Uy, sorry. Eso no se supone que lo vean. Okay, uh, very nice that you guys do. Um, so yeah, I am always glad of sharing some time with you. And I just wanted to thank you, you know, for the great work that you do. Because even though these are late classes, you still come with energy. You still do um, very, very good work. Now, this evening, I'm a little bit sorry because of what happened. Um, I say a little bit because it wasn't my fault, you know. It was uh, not my decision to to have the, the electricity outage, but things happen. Uh, now, these are the questions we're also going to be answering for next class. Probably not because you guys will already know the answer to them. But if you want to make it fun, you know, don't look, it, don't look them up. Just come to them uh, eye-blinded. And we'll see how good you guys are at history. Uh, if we have the chance, we can continue working on things like those. Um, the reason why I do this in this class, the reason why I give you more opportunities to, to practice or to participate into the lessons is because we don't really have like a lot to work with. If you have seen the platform, there are not like too many topics. Therefore, it is better for us, you know, to spend our time practicing, speaking, doing some bilingual work instead of uh you know spending the time just listening to me i'd rather listen to you than, than listen to me for a whole hour um so yeah but well 
Thank you guys very much for your attention. Thank you for the dedication during this whole week. I know it is a little bit uh, stressful to be in a class like every single day of the week, but we have made it. Next week, hopefully we're going to have a regular week with only going from Monday to Thursday, finishing on, on Thursday. Uh, and yeah, we only have a couple more classes to go. It has been amazing so far. Hopefully we're going to do the same on the last couple of them. Well, for me only, thank you for now. See you next Monday. Enjoy your weekend. Rest. Yeah. And uh, yeah, eat well if you can. And if you can <laughs> cook, you, cook. Yeah, very, you're very welcome. Very All good. right. So bye-bye, uh, people. Weekend, Have a good night. Bye, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.